is it okay? Is it okay? Uh oh, what I do to it? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Technical difficulties. There we go. Okay. Hi. Thank heaven. Oh no, it's the even bigger one. And my review on the slightly smaller one was scathing. This one's going to be terrible. It's good. It's good. That's my opinion. I spoiled it in the first 30 seconds of the video. Now it's time to go into more detail. So the Elite 2.0 Flip 32. I'm not gonna lie, everybody was worried about this, especially after the Flip 16. Everybody was thinking, oh my goodness, it's gonna be a $70 version of the Flip 16, it's gonna be even worse because more weight on the front. You have no idea how front heavy this is. And the Flip 32 released. And it was completely 180 degrees away from what people were thinking because it actually works even better than the Flip 8. Like, the biggest, most unwieldy and heavy blaster ended up being the best out of the three. How did that happen? I don't know. Let's start with the review. So starting off with the design, this blaster is surprisingly minimalist for how big it is. And I don't mean that by saying, oh, they don't cram detail in every corner. I mean, the details that they do add are big, spread out, and they actually seem to mean something. So like the Flip 32 logo, you can see it takes up the whole middle of this blaster, like with this large canister looking detail on the side. You can almost see what looks like the internals, although I don't know if that molding has any significance to the actual performance, but considering the way that it's put in there, it almost looks like it does. The place where the priming handle connects has this large wheel looking thing, and the funny thing is that kind of Elite 2.0 flip shots rotating decal thing is centered perfectly on this circle. Pretty interesting detail, which I'm glad they put in. And my favorite part of this is they don't give you one Nerf logo, no, 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 no. They give you two Nerf logos right next to each other. I don't know why. Because this unwieldy, gigantic piece of plastic looking stock is not removable. It is one solid piece, so why did they put an extra Nerf logo on it? I've never seen that on any Nerf blaster before. Genuinely, this is the only blaster I have with two Nerf logos on the same side. And especially on a stock that can't be removed. And look, they give you two more Nerf logos on the other side. It wasn't a mistake, it was intentional. That is the funniest detail I've ever seen on any blaster, but I'm not going to go on that for too long. It also kind of has these hose looking things that almost look significant, but they're literally just extra pieces of plastic. The plunger tubes don't actually go that way. Sad, that would have actually been a pretty cool use for them. Now let's get to the part that everybody's excited about, the ergonomics, because, oh yeah, these solid, solid pieces of plastic, two of them on the front, wait times 10 to the power of 40. The main grip of this blaster is okay, but it definitely could use some better details because this sort of detail in the middle, which shows off this swirly pattern is sunken in a little bit. So there are these ridges around the edges of it that dig into your hand. It's almost unnoticeable, but it's just noticeable enough for it to be really annoying. As for the way this thing primes, the priming handle is this lever action, which pushes forward and then back. The trigger is a two-stage trigger like a rough cut. And even though it has a plastic spring, it seems to be very fleshed out and is very clicky and responsive. The foregrip is small, but it is super comfortable. Very filleted and with this big finger choil for your index finger to go on. And these little switches right here are actually the safety lock so you don't accidentally switch the barrel. You pull that thing down to switch them, pull it back, and then push it forward. And unlike the Flip 16, it sounds like it's confident doing that. I could do that all day long, but I'm not gonna kill your ears anymore. The stock is a little bit too short, but it does actually work for this blaster because my God, if it was any longer, it would just kill your left arm. Ah oh, yeah, let's talk about weight. Let's say you put your hand right on the middle. No. Let's say you put your hand up here. No. Let's say you put your hand up here. Maybe, let's say you put it on these ridges. Nope, still forward. Let's say you put it in the middle. Ah, there we go. This is where the center of mass is, right here. That's where it is. That's how much weight is on the front of this thing. It is genuinely the most front heavy blaster I own. The Mega Mastodon is easier to wield than this thing, especially when you're shouldering it, which is why I never shoulder it. I fire it 
from the waist like this because that's like five times more comfortable just using this stock as an arm brace than anything, even though I already have an arm brace. But using it as an arm brace to hold your shot straight is so much more comfortable and easier to use than shouldering it just because of how unbelievably front heavy this thing is. Seriously, it is the most uncomfortable blaster to hold in my entire collection just because of the abundance of weight on the front end. All right, I know I kind of mixed this segment of the video in with the ergonomics, but we got to talk about the functionality at least a little bit. This blaster is lever action and works basically the same, except it has a pistol style grip instead of like a shotgun style grip. So the lever action does not feel like the sling fire or the scavenger. It feels very different, which I think is important to note. Oh, and I hope you like smart ARs because this blaster's got a lot of them. Good, I'm glad you like them because it's got 32. 32, 32 smart ARs that actually work way more reliably than you could ever imagine. How can I demonstrate that? Firing test time. Oh, but you didn't think it was gonna be so easy. It's time for my favorite segment of the video, loading the Flip 32 with Tessera. Unedited. So, so how has your day been, everybody? I'm glad it's been good. I'm glad after that whole car incident the other day, you actually got it figured out, so uh, everything is fine now. You've gotta be kidding me. There's no way it happened again. Oh no, this time it didn't just blow up the gas station, but it caused a hole in the ozone layer. Well, that sucks. I don't really know what to tell you there. I mean, I'm sure the ozone layer will be fine, but... <sighs> that's uh, quite a mess. It looks like we're almost done loading this blaster, but no, we're just uh, approaching about halfway. So other than that, has your day been okay at least? Good. I really hope that uh, I really hope that you don't get in trouble for causing a hole in the brozone layer. Oh, okay, it ended up working out. Well, yeah, that's good. That's good. Alrighty, that's excellent. Tessera has been fine. Thank you for asking. She's been very confused lately, wondering why YouTube is so slow and why YouTube keeps turning the comments off on all of my videos. It's a pretty strange, and I'm not quite sure why. But, uh, Tessera is hoping to figure that out soon. I'm just a pawn in this operation. I'm not actually the one in control. It's it's all Tessera. She, she is a, a living snake. Alrighty, we're good to go. Well, now that the zombie target has gotten to deal with two more minutes of my terrible stories, now we can do the firing demo. No issues with the smart ARs. So, the Flip 32. What do I think of this giant, unwieldy $70 waste of plastic with 32 smart ARs that probably aren't going to be as reliable as mine if you live anywhere else in the world? I like this one. I really, really do. Because it's a funny, gimmicky blaster that actually does everything it's trying to do really effectively. It's essentially the same reason why I love the Infinis so much. It's introducing a gimmick that we haven't seen before, and it's putting effort into making that gimmick work. Now, this gimmick obviously isn't nearly as effective as the one the Infinis has, which is why the Infinis is my favorite blaster and this one isn't, but the Flip 32 definitely is putting its gimmick to use. It's very big, clunky, and fun, and there's nothing wrong with that. Same reason why I like the Judge, big, clunky, 
fun blasters have a place in our hobby just for being the starting point for people to join. Because not everybody joins looking for 100% competition. Some people play with nerf just because it's fun. I'm kind of in the middle and I look at a blaster's quality based on how much it can be enjoyed by both sides. People who want competition, but also people who want to have fun. I definitely think the Flip 32 isn't going to be a competitive blaster for almost everybody, but for a fun blaster, it definitely gets my upvote. So if you want to get a Flip 32, I will link one in the description below. With that said, thanks for watching, subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below what do you think of this blaster or any blasters you'd like me to review in the future, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!